After that unfortunate mishap that I had earlier this month, I got a second chance at a clear sky this weekend, so I'm going to take full advantage of this opportunity. Winter in the Northern Hemisphere is home to some beautiful nebulae targets. And tonight I'm going to be photographing two nebulae that I was able to image last year and hopefully can make some new improvements this year. So come along for another astrophotography imaging session as I revisit what I consider to be the most distinct pair of nebulae targets in the winter sky, the Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula. My name is Kwesi Akwa, and welcome to the Astro Park. The Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula are located in the constellation of Orion and are small segments of the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex. The Horsehead Nebula, or Barnard 33, is a small absorption or dark nebula at a distance of 1,375 light years away from Earth. Heavy concentrations of dust in the region are localized into interstellar clouds, resulting in alternating sections of opacity and transparency. The darkness of the horsehead is caused by the dust blocking the light of the stars behind it. NGC 2024, or the Flame Nebula, is an emission nebula at a distance of 1,350 light years away from Earth. A majority of the glow of the Flame Nebula comes from the recombination of ionized hydrogen and electrons. Additional dark gas and dust lies in front of the bright part of the nebula, and this is what causes the dark network that appears in the center of the glowing gas. So, for this imaging session, I'll be using my medium-sized triplet apochromatic refractor telescope, the Orion Eon 104EDX2. And for imaging, I'll be using my one-shot color CMOS camera, the ZWO ASI 2600MC Pro. And as usual, this will all be on top of the Orion Atlas Pro AZ EQG mount. And to keep light pollution at a minimum, as well as maintain those natural colors, I'll be using the Optolong L Pro broadband light pollution filter. So with all that being said, let's head outside, take a walk in the park, and get everything set up for tonight's imaging session of the Horsehead and Flame Nebulae. I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, it is chilly in the Astro Park tonight, but I got it done. I completed my polar alignment, star alignment, focusing routine and guiding procedures. So my imaging session for the Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula is now currently in progress. I'm inside of APT and everything seems to be going pretty well so far. So if you follow my cursor real quick, the red cursor in the center, it might be a little bit hard for you to see due to the glare from my screen, but Right here, this bright dot right here, that's the star of Alnatec, which is one of the three stars in Orion's belt. And right below that is the Flame Nebula, so you can see some of the dark dust lanes in there. And a little bit to the right of center here is the Horsehead Nebula, so it's a dark to grayish smudge right there. 
And there's also some other nebulae in this scene as well. So to the lower left of the horse head here, this star is inside of a reflection nebula known as NGC 2023. And right below that here, where my red cursor is, this star passes through another reflection nebula called Index Catalog, or IC 435. And in a full color image of this region, you'll see a red wall of gas and dust behind the Horsa Nebula. That's Index Catalog 434, which is an emission nebula discovered by William Herschel. So it's a pretty dynamic region with a lot of stuff going on, which is pretty cool. So for this imaging session, I've taken some precautions this time around. I'm not using the 0 0.65 times reducer flattener since I need to still figure out the calibrations for my flat frames. So I'm shooting at the native focal length of 650 millimeters at f6.25. So it's a nice medium field of view, but the APS-C size sensor on the 2600 MC Pro gives it a little bit of a wider field. So I'm able to fit all of the nebulae in the same field of view. And everything seems to be working pretty well on that front. So for this session, I'm taking an hour's worth of three minute exposures, and then I'll be focusing on on attack and then taking another round of an hour's worth of three minute exposures. So having all attack in that field of view can be a good thing as well as maybe a not so good thing. It's great for me because since I use a Batnoff mask for focusing, I can just focus on that without slewing to another bright star and coming back. However, when I stack enough exposures, all attack has a bright star halo, which is pretty annoying to edit. So I'll try my best in my post-processing to tame it as best as I can, but if I can't get it, that's okay as well. So yeah, apart from that, everything is going pretty well so far, so I'm just going to take in as much data as I can tonight. This is the only clear night that I have for, it looks like the next couple of weeks, so I want to collect as many three minute exposures as I can tonight, and that will be what I use for the final image in this video. So I'll gather as much data as I can, and I'll see how the night progresses. If you're looking for a signpost to declare the arrival of winter in the Northern Hemisphere, look no further than to the constellation of Orion. As I mentioned earlier, the Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula are part of a larger network of nebulae known as the Orion Molecular Cloud Complex. It's a region of space that covers the entire constellation and is composed of different types of nebulae. It includes the closest star-forming region to Earth, the Great Orion Nebula, as well as its companions, the Marian's Nebula and the Running Man Nebula. The Witch Head Nebula, which is a reflection nebula right next to the star of Rigel. Messier 78, another reflection nebula. And the overarching emission nebula of Barnard's Loop. You could use a medium-sized telescope to get an up-close view on these objects individually, or you could use a small telescope or even a wide-field camera lens to capture the entire region. The combinations are practically endless. So, whatever you decide to do, and if you're brave enough to come outside and face the elements, I hope you have some fun discovering the vast nebulae treasures in the constellation of Orion.
everybody. So I was able to complete my imaging session. I gathered about two hours and some change of data tonight. There was a few frames where I saw some airplanes flying through the frame and it left some bright streaks. I should be able to remove that with Kappa Sigma clipping, but if the streak is too big, then unfortunately I'll have to throw those frames out altogether. I'm still a bit disappointed that I wasn't able to use the data set that I acquired earlier this month due to that gradient issue, but it was a lesson learned, so I'm just going to review my mistakes and just continue forward from there. So all that's left for me to do is to shoot my calibration frames, pack everything up, and then I'll go home and warm up with some hot chocolate. So thank you for watching Astro Park. Please enjoy the image of the Horsehead Nebula and the Flame Nebula at the end of this video. And as always, until next time, take care, and I wish you all clear skies. If you're an astrophotographer like me, who has to set up and then take down the equipment while being outside for the entire session, the winter season can be especially brutal. All you can think about is the cold. But as the night progresses, the temperature drops, and things start to become challenging, it's up to you to remember what it is that brought you outside to begin with. Use that as a motivator and a reminder to just keep pushing forward. Safely, of course. Because just like anything in life that you're passionate about pursuing, it's not going to be easy but it will be worth it.